So far, the Widowmine gets most of the Banelings. No Hardly has a few more Banelings oh to my kill. God, he hard. still has 40. What? Holy Marines! One of the best things about any esports game is comebacks, when one player in a match turns the tide and all of a sudden emerges victorious. StarCraft 2 is famous for many comebacks its esports history witnessed, and today we'll see the 10 best of them. Let's start with a great rusty series of Teja and Zest. The last map between them started out with Zest's dominance, who applied unbearable pressure on Teja's defense. At first it seemed like Teja is going to crumble really fast, however, he kept on fighting back up until he went for a base trade, which resulted in an amazing ending for this match. If he does, it's going to be his best chance to just instantly win this game. Yeah, if he can stim and get that Mothership call, that'd be fantastic. He's going to be protecting that very, very uh, tenaciously, though, is Zest. And he's actually got himself in quite a tight bind here, but behind this mineral line, good force fields, time warp yeah. slows all of this down. Very good there from Zest, still has the recall available. Supply blocked at this point as well, trying to reinforce forwards, but that's still a lot of uh -oh, bio. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, he actually uses the, the time warp here, he's going to go for the fight. Uh, and he actually loses the Mothership core overall anyway. The Widowmines have done huge amounts of damage to those Zealots to try and buffer for this. Those two Widow Mines absolutely more Zealots that. coming in. That's a lot of Zealots. He needs more bio here with all of this. One Medivac's out. Another one's going to be coming out very soon as well, but he needs extra longevity with this. Oh, Zest. Zest breaks this natural ground for Tasia. There's no high ground vision. So smart there. Oh, very, very well placed there by Tasia. Zest has to be so, so careful about how he does this. Likewise, Tasia does too. This is very dangerous. There are two Widow Mines loaded behind this army. Yeah, he has to actually separate reinforcements and then walk them in. He doesn't want them all clumped up because he has to go past these Widow Mines. And, oh, tries to go for the Force Fields, lets those units filter through. Uh, but these two Immortals at the back, they're going uncontested right now. Yeah, another Widow Mine in place. Combat Shields down oh. soon. The supply blocks for Tejra have really, really hurt him in this game. Yeah. Really hurt him because Zess now has, has just been able to propel himself forwards with this. He is unsupply block now, but... I'm, I'm not sure Tejra can defend this. Yeah, it's getting increasingly more difficult. The Observer's come in to get rid of the, the Widow Vines. Oh, and that was really his one option to actually keep a lot of this back. As those two Immortals, one of them ah. oh, doesn't even die during this. The army of Zess is so powerful now. And all, during all of this, he has technically a little bit of economy on a second base where Tejra doesn't. He's going for the second Immortal, can't quite get to it again. Ah, oh, there's so many Zealots as well now. The Zealots are almost outnumbering the entirety of the bio. He doesn't even, he's just bulldozing up this ramp. He doesn't care. Breaching this high ground now for Zeft is brilliant. And here come the SEVs, last, last stand here for Tasia. Tasia on the verge of defeat, trying to hold off desperately against this. The Immortals have done well. The majority of the Zealots are gone, but he lost so many SCVs trying yeah. to defend that. And Zest does not, he's been uh, interrupted with his economy here, so he can just continue to keep warping in units. He's building another Immortal at home. Tasia's down a 39 supply. Zest is so close to finally being able to get that revenge game that he's wanted for a while here against Tejra after that 3-0. He's, he's gone for a drop on the other side of the map where he's not even looking to defend. Yeah, this is this is just desperation now. He has to go for something, some kind of base trade. Yeah. Even the probes are coming off the line because why on earth not at this point? Zest knows the kind of power position he's in here with this. I mean, and he has a lot of money as well. It's like a base trade. It's like if he can maybe kill off all the structures and prevent somehow from Zest to build Stargate units, then he can float the command centers and structures that Zest cannot ever kill. That's true, that's true. But all, I mean, all, all Zest has to do with the money he has now is maybe you know make a nexus somewhere else or protect yeah. that and he has the money Whoa, he's catching all the probes Ooh. Oh, that's immortal. all right. That's all right. That's not too bad. Tasia trying to make the best of this game here with that immortal going down. That's a nice start to try and keep this going. And the nexus has been built. So Zest is gonna have to just sit on that nexus. Yeah. And then try to build air units if we're going to see these structures floated around. Yeah, this this game could I mean, actually go on for a, a, quite a while longer here. As Tasia, Tasia knew he couldn't beat the army, so yeah. he, he has to try something else. Look for a different avenue to try to find a and victory. he's going to go for barracks on this right-hand side as well. And I don't think those barracks are going to be spotted anytime soon with ha what Zest wow. has available to him. This is, this is actually crazy, because Tasia could could make this comeback a, a, a reality. He's, he must not lose Medivax. That is the most important. Of course, then second is going to be these Marina Marauders. Can't lose anything here. And Fezzer has a really good point, actually, there. Uh, hi highlighting the fact that he has energy for sentries, so he could use Hallucination to try and scout around the map and see what's going on. Yeah, and also just, like, building extra units in his army, yes. which is going to tank yes. more damage, so maybe the real ones can kill off a couple. The economy is pretty even, pretty even at this point. Tasia is looking for opportunities oh, with oh. this army. Takes the high grounds. 
There isn't an observer with this army either, so technically this high ground is very difficult here for Zest to do anything oh, about. Look at Zest now, bottom right, he's gonna actually find this, and I'm pretty sure at this point you go, oh no. Yeah. Uh-oh, this is not good. It. I cannot believe it. What a recovery that we're seeing here so far Whoa. by Taysha. It's not done just yet, of course, Did but... I think, he, I think we missed him losing an Immortal. There was an Immortal with this, that's gone. Uh-oh. That's so much fun. That's a huge deal. But if not two Immortals. Yeah, that's a huge deal. Losing those and only having gateway it's units only gateway against units this force? It's now. Tasia can make this work. Oh my god. Tasia can make this work. He's clearing up the Zealots. He's still building Marines. This, yeah, yeah. Very guys. impressed <laughs> with how this has turned up here. This is absolutely unbelievable from Tasia. He's actually taking the supply lead now. He's still mining on these bases. And there's nothing, there's not a whole lot Zest can do about this. He's pinned, because if he moves out to stop the mining, then he loses what he has at home here. Yeah. He is trapped in into this corner of the map, uh -oh. and this is a big army. Uh oh, is this where Tage is going to make it happen here? The force fields are not doing what they want to do at all. This ga gateway force is just completely falling apart. Mothership Core has gone down as well. Unbelievable game from Tage. Absolutely incredible combat. There's minimal units here, and Zest is looking at this as a loss now. How the hell can he stop this army? All he has is basically central. There's one Colossus on the way from that Robo facility, but that's now under siege. He's not even going to get the Colossus sound. Zest here is being crushed by Tasia, killing off the remaining gateway forces. Zest has it's to be absolutely defeated. You can just see down the bottom. He probably can't even believe this has happened to him. This was his game. It was his game to win. It was his game to move on to the winners, but it's not the case. The probes are off the line. But Tasia smiling. is making this work. I cannot believe what we are witnessing here at the start of day two. It doesn't even matter if he loses anything here. GG! Tasia takes the first series of the day and oh my god, what a series it was. Sometimes in StarCraft 2 you can win against anyone if you just hit the right build order. For example, it happened with a free hatch opener against Proxy Gates in a match with Naniva and Hyun. Was it recoverable for Hyun? Probably not. But what if a skill difference is a bit wider and there is also one secret base which has not been scouted? This is exactly what happened with Jadong and Gunfu Banda. Well, surely this is just a straight up loss. <laughs> I mean, unless you have... Well, okay, it's Jadong, he's pretty good. Uh, oh, the hatchery has gone oh, down, oh. it is official. This is, this is almost always considered a build order loss, but there have been situations where magic can happen. Magic. Keep in mind, Gung Fu still needs to micro these zealots exceptionally yes. well. Uh, well, that's actually kind of in Jadong's favor that those drones will be mining gold minerals while this is all happening. Yeah. So Jadong is now on a quest to buy time for this spawning pool finish. He needs to keep his units alive. He's canceling his gas. He's canceled his third hatchery. He knows exactly what's happening. He has a sinking feeling in his stomach, but he is Jadong. He's uh. been up against the wall before and he's worked his way out of these situations with Micro. Right now, more than ever, he needs to have that sort of reaction. Gunfu doesn't seem to realize the gold base is up there. Okay. Hasn't sent a Zealot up there yet, but he's just chasing these drones in circles. He needs to kill that spawning pool, or yeah. he needs to go and stop all of the mining. Right now, Jadong is earning some minerals, and we see it right oh, now. Oh, three spine crawlers at that gold base. Now he realizes exactly what is going on. He needs to get over there fast. Uh, but at the same time, six Zerglings in production. I don't know if they'll be able to buy enough time here against four zealots worth? The this Zerglings are leaving as well. They're trying to run oh across the map. Oh my god, he needs some amazing hold position micro here. These drones this need to hold position in front of these spine crawlers. These zealots cannot be allowed to kill them. But the spines are almost finishing and once they're up, they're going to do so well against these zealots. Beautiful drone micro so far. Still nine drones left against ten probes and the spine crawlers oh. are finishing and they are decimating these zealots. Yeah, they're going to be able to hold on for now. He's been able to keep six drones alive against nine probes and he's in the probe line with the Zerglings. Jadon here with the decision making, able to be able to, on top of this production and on top of this economy. Now five zealots somehow have to break this position. I'm not sure it's doable here for Gung Fu Banda, despite it being 15, uh, 25 supply against 11. The zealots, they need to amass up more, they need to do more. He, he can't take down this base. I don't think he can make it through these spine crawlers. He's trying. In, oh, Micro's one out of the way there. Now the drones come off the line again. Have to fight on against this. But the spine crawlers are going to be enough to clean this up here. More zealots are coming in from the back here. But he's held on. He's held on as Jadong against a triple hatch opener.
Oh my gosh, oh my this God. is incredible. These zealots, they need to stop going in against these spines. He needs to go and kill the spawning pool, but he's trying to go for broke, but I don't think he can overwhelm it. The, oh, the spine crawler micro. Oh my God. The only player that pulls back his individually hurt spine crawler is Jadong, just showing us how it's done. So still this Ling disrupting the income up to the, towards the top as well, so it's not exactly the easiest of things for him to produce two zealots at any time. Now another few Zerglings have coupled up here with this to continue harassing here Kang Fu Banda, and it's 15 supply against 15 supply in a situation where he macro back two spine crawlers and was able to kill off all of the ze zealots. And now he's killing off every single probe. Jadong here is making a brilliant, brilliant hold, a brilliant recovery as all of these probes are gonna fall down. And surely at this point, Kung Fu Panda can feel it in his body. Kung Fu Panda is having the hardest of times. Uh, he's gonna stick it out by the looks of things, but it is all but dumb pig. Absolutely, those drones are mining gold minerals and there is a never-ending stream of Zerglings coming across this map. These probes desperately oh, trying to do something. Look at that smile, GG! He takes the series, ladies and gentlemen. If you ask me what's the most seemingly impossible comeback that ever happened, I'll show you this match. In this game, Suho Sin, a Zerg player, faced one of the best turns at that time. MKP. Marine King Prime was famous for his amazing microcontrol and his aggressive playstyle. However, his Zerg opponent went for something that's so incredibly rare that nobody even scouts or prepares for it. It was a 6 pool against a Terran player, a strategy that never really works because of wall offs and repairs. However, in a very lucky coincidence, MKP goes for the CC first on a low ground, which suddenly makes this strategy extremely viable and almost impossible to counter. Counting station, this is 15 SCVs, 10 Zerglings on the map, guys. Marine King, does he have what it takes to defend in this game? I don't think so. There won't be a single Marine. He gets into the base, and now everything depends on Marine King. Well, just killing. It's the entire Zergling group only with SCVs. Yeah, he's gonna have to be able to do that if he wants to win. I just don't think he can be done. Oh wow, extractor he cancels trick. another extractor trick. Did he build another drone? No. Another Zergling? He wanted to build one. I think he had he the just, resources. You made him a slight mistake there, but yeah, that's definitely what he had planned. And this is just, this is gonna be lights out. He is pulling his SCVs. He has not started another barracks on the map, but he's got enough minerals to. Uh, if, he, if he hides his SCV and starts a barracks here, he can maybe get away with it. And he tries to. He tries to get a barracks into play. At the same time, we have two Zerglings making sure that there's no mining going on. And what exactly is Suhoshin going to do? Will he just retreat with his drones? Marine King is fighting. He is not done here just yet. He wants to get these barracks. He wants to build a few Marines. Will he be able to pull it off though? Neither one of those players is mining right now. Will Suhoshin go and start mining again? Marine King just hiding. Now he's on creep. That's the big problem that he's facing. He is on creep. And there they are. The Zerglings taking down SCV after SCV. The drones are going back to the mineral line. See, I think this is a mistake by Marine King. Going to this location on the map allows the drones to begin mining again. Uh, if he had run in a different direction, he may have been able to face basically only Lings, but either way, he does finish the barracks and he's moving his command center right now. All he needs is a bunker. If he can get a bunker up with a marine in it, he can start mining. He's going to send his command center right over to that location where he has hidden his barracks. And he has the resources to do it. He has the resources and he will certainly try. 13 SCVs against 5 drones. This is the current count in the worker. Um, the, yeah, it's the current worker in the worker department. And, and here we go, man. He's actually. I think this not, may be a mistake by him. I don't think he's going to be able to break this bunker. And there's about to be a fourth marine as soon as he can uh, deposit these minerals here. Well, oh, we'll see. he really tries hard. He had 20 zerglings against three marines. And he is going to try to land this orbital. That's not going to be something that line allows him to do. Got to be careful with that Marine. Oh no, the SCVs are exposed here again as well. They are exposed. Are they getting close enough to the bunker to repair? He's trying to. He's definitely trying to. The bunker is being attacked, but Suoshin is losing quite a lot. The SCVs are being targeted, of course. He wants to take all of them out. He wants to take every single SCV out here, but here comes the mule already. Suoshin lost quite a bit. Marine King down to five SCVs, but we all know how excellent mules are in these situations. Yeah, he's dropping the second one down now as well. The commands are starting to take some damage, but he does take out a Ling. No! Nice micro by Suoshin. Loses a Ling though regardless. 
Is Marine King able to pull this off? Four more Lings in production right now. He's making another depot to wall off the bunker. The bunker's going to be safe no matter what. The issue is the SCVs. Marine King is certainly actually in the better position here. Oh, he definitely is, man. This is insane. It all comes down to him being able to get that one SCV out to build the, the, the command center, I mean, rather the barracks in the bunker. Targeting down Lings here. He made oh! it. Oh! Oh, he gets so him out. close. That was so close indeed. That mule needs to deposit its minerals. He does. He needs to take down the SCVs, but he can't. The bunker is actually making sure that the SCVs are safe and still five to five harvesters, but it's the mules that count. The mules certainly do. And look at this micro by Marine King. He's taken out the last of these lings. Nice splitting. And I think he's done it. The Marine King has held the 6 pole with the command center first. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's ahead in the SCV count, he has the bunker, and he built it, GG! Look at Marine King, there's Sixha, oh my god! In Hago the Swarm, the most common ZVT looked like this. Terran player starts putting pressure on a Zerg player, usually with an unending stream of Marines and Mines, and this is a very difficult battle and a very tough skill check for both races. If you fail one battle, in a domino effect, you are very likely to lose the entire game, especially if you also start losing your economy. This happened with Scarlet, and her last hope was a big flock of mutalisks, which of course is very mobile, but very vulnerable to widow mines, marines, and force. Having little to no economy back at home, she had to pull off a miracle. Just get that in the end. A really nice macro from Dream, but I really feel like this comes back to that late third base from Scarlet. It just doesn't give her the economy to deal with the greedy builds that Bomber and Dream have been doing. Yep, Zerglings so and Bane, he's going to hold once again at this third. Uh, but Dream here, a little bit reluctant to push on forwards whilst he does not have Drilling Claws. And 2-2 is also a big, big factor that he needs to have out against the current upgrade standing here for Scarlet. At 2-2 versus 1-1 is a big, big... Oh, oh, those were huge Widowmine shots on the Muta Clump and a bunch of Banelings. Very, very nice. Has a few Banelings left over, but those three Widowmines could actually oh, be wow. a catastrophe here for Scarlet. A really nice splitting there big by Dream. Army. That's just such a scary army here, and Scarlet really doesn't have that many uh, Banelings to try and just push through and kill everything off. This is a tough game for Scarlet in game number one, as the, well, the th fourth base has indeed fallen once again. When it's three base Zerg versus three base Terran, uh, we know the Zerg's going to have a little bit of a harder time as those Banelings are going to move forwards once again. There's a few Widow Mines here. Lots actually do connect uh, with the Zerglings that were running forwards, but also doing a little bit of damage to the Marines. And Dream constantly just splits and splits and splits and never gives up, but Scarlet is holding her own. She pushes through the initial army, but the reinforcements are going to be enough to keep Dream alive. I think, actually, a lot of Banelings coming through there, and not the best one of my shots, but the Marine Split does force her to pull Good back counterattacks, doing a ton of damage with those, and it looks like that is what she's going to go for here. She's going to go try and take out that fourth base, just missing a medevac, unfortunately. But at the same time, Dream is pushing in with a really big, scary army. And 3-3 is about to finish for him. Yeah, and that's when it gets very, very hairy here for the Zerg. If they're not able to really deal with it before 3-3 hits, those Marines are going to be able to shred up everything in these locations. Third base is very, very much under jeopardy. But at the same time, a counterattack here by Scarlet with those Mutalists trying to do something. The Banelings do end up moving forward, trying to get those connections, but still, great splits here by Dream. There's a Widow Mines that have still been alive, and the Pantry Fortress did not fall. This one fort alone provides good support fire against the Mutalisks if they want to come and engage. This army is still just refusing to die from Dream, and it, it really had to. This this was kind of her, her last hope. She's now down to two bases, and she didn't even trade the fourth base for the third base, which would still be really bad for Zerg. Cool. But as is, just if she kills this army, that's nice. But even that, she's just down 30 supply, down economy, down tech, down upgrades. Uh, gotta be careful. She actually focused down those two Widowmines very, very nicely here. And she caught this at the perfect time. Everything was loaded up. She got a lot of medevacs for that trade. It was as good as it could have gotten for Scarlet, but she has to retreat out now. Those three, three Marines barreling down on these Mutalist location. They are. And it's looking harder and harder. This is this is why we're talking about that. 3-3 three, three upgrade kicks in, and yeah. Zerg just stops being able to trade. She's slowly losing bases, falling further and further behind in economy. And Dream just kind of going to roll through here, looks like. One last base up for Scarlet, but it's not even any drones mining at it. Uh, Ten Marines on the way at any time now. Even adding on the extra Thor as well for that support fire against the Mutas. And Scarlet looks to go for the counter attack. She can't engage that directly. She feels she doesn't have enough Lings, enough Banelings to support these Mutalisks in turn. 
as uh, so trying to kill off some of the economy, not doing too badly, but uh, again, Dream with the supply advantage in terms of army. It's 115 to 70 Dream's right now. trying to help out, but has to run on away once again here to Scarlet. It just feels as if every single turn, every single thing she wants to do keeps getting shut down here by Dream, who then, uh, off the back of it, snipes out a hatchery, does some damage to a mineral line, and yeah, killing off a few Marines here and there, but uh, for the, that, that wasn't even worth it. No. Losing the mainlings there for the Marines is, uh. that's a loss for Scarlet. Yeah, and trying to get Burrow, and this is where Scarlet's going to try and come back into this game. She uh, believes that it's the only way here from this point on. It really is the only way. She just can't take a straight-up fight, army yeah. versus army. She needs to spread him out and get him fragmented as much as possible and then hope the mobility of the Mutas and the Banelings will kick in. But she has almost no economy. She has one mining base right now. Look at this. He's actually boosting one Thor back to defend that base. That was really cool there from Dream. Yeah, very smart of him. And now getting kind of desperate, just kind of hold positioning over the mineral line, hoping to kill enough workers to make a difference. And, well, still burrowed banelings everywhere. Actually, there's, uh, now that I look at the vision of Scarlet on the map, there's just overlords all over the place. Nice, yeah. picking up an orbital command. The Mutalists still keeping Scarlet in this, but it's still a long stretch. Oh. It's still a long haul ahead of her. Had he not had the additional army in the main, maybe she can make something happen. Just go through and take out literally all of the production really quickly. She has so many mutas, buildings just die as fast as units. Yeah, they evaporate. It's, but uh, the real question is, what is she going to do about this army? How can she ever actually fight it? Oh, really? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. oh, that, that could be big. Yeah. Maybe there's a chance. She should take that. I don't she, think it's going to get much better. If that, if that clump walks past this once again, oh, but uh, it didn't step right flirting with it. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the big problems here is that Scarlet, yes, she's been buying a lot of time, but she hasn't been really trading with, his, with her opponent. And now there's 18 Widow Mines out on the field, which... She's getting them some for free, though. She's oh, yeah. she's doing as well as she possibly can here. This is really impressive by her. Actually, just, she's up in terms of supply now. It's, yeah. Her army supply is bigger because she just has so many mutants. 52. This, this is, is actually getting oh, to the point oh, where... Oh, oh, oh my. she knows, she knows, she knows! Oh, <laughs> what an explosion! <laughs> in game number one. She was she so can do far this down. Now. Wow, how many Marines are left? There's only 26 Marines left. Her, her Mutas can actually take a fight now, barring barring absurd Widow Mine shots. Oh my god. <laughs> That's incredible. Right. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. she does uh, not want to do that. Uh, oh my god. Okay, wait. Uh, 38 Mar Mutalisks still. Uh, uh, this oh, is a little flock of straps. No, there's enough room on the bottom for them to run out safely. She's just being kind of sloppy there. Ah, yes. But moving into the, I guess that's the fourth base? I don't know. The only current mining base for yeah. Dream. I'm going to take the rest of that out. And kill the armory once more. I think that's the fifth armory that's died this game. Yeah, there's quite a lot of them going down. The thing is, is that previously we were saying that Dream had like 18 Widow Mines, and now he's down to like three. So she's slowly trading away those Widow Mines and making this much, much easier to take that <laughs> final engagement. Yeah, she's just picking him apart. It's getting to the point where she could actually just go for a frontal assault and end it pretty yeah. easily. But again, being careful. Widow mines are a scary, scary thing. And actually a Hellbat now, which... Oh. Uh, Might as well just take that. There's yeah, not that yeah. many units just to kill anymore. Like four Marines worthy <laughs> training. If, if she had gotten the Widow Mines, that would have been totally worthwhile. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Hey. oh. That one was kind of like not as climactic as the other ones because of this position. Well, she already has it one, so <laughs> yeah. it's not really that... There's not so much drama left anymore. Instead those of those the, original ones were massive. Oh, though. they were brilliant. Yeah, that, that that really brought it back in. Anything else other than that would have been difficult. Her, her oh, 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 Jesus. Wait. And there go the widow mines. <laughs> I like how he tries to split as it happens. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, GG. Game that number was one incredible. goes to Scarlet. She is happy with that. I'm not surprised. Sometimes Terran players just refuse to die. No matter how many SCVs they lose, they keep on trying to get on their feet and continue fighting. The game between Hart and Chigoa is just another example of why you should never relax and make small mistakes even if you have a massive advantage over a player who is still very much dedicated to keep on going. What are you going to do with all those Zerglings? He realizes what's going on, but the Zerglings are already moving in for Shigua. They're going to get on top of this ramp. He can deny the Hellions from going back into Hart's base, and then suddenly no, you can't these Banelings won't be time to get this run on the Hellions. A few of them taking a lot of damage, but the Banelings have broken the natural wall. A few more Banelings in production. The SCVs are still here. The Banelings are going to get on top of these workers, but he's saving them. He knows that there's nothing here to defend them, so he wants to break the ramp. There's The, the depots have been lowered. He doesn't even need to. 
Sick, uh, actually sick Hellion control by heart. He still has a couple of them alive. Of course, Jigwa needs to do a ridiculous amount of damage with this. And he is doing damage, but he needs to do more. Okay, he has a lot of Zerglings in the main as well. And it is nothing but Zerglings streaming across the map. It's 40 army supply against 12. Uh, if the heart holds this, well, that would be an absolute miracle. Yeah, I mean, when you have three command centers, you can afford to lose a lot of SCVs. It's still just pure Zerglings being made by Shigo, but so many of these SCVs are so low on hit points, mm -hmm. these Zerglings kill them just incredibly fast. These Hellions are trying to fight in the mineral line. There is the Marine, but these, I mean, the Lings are going to overwhelm this force. I think that we're starting to reach that point where Hart might lose too much because Shigwa's not missing yeah, any injects. He's just going to send Zerglings across this map until the end of time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Until the dawn of days. Only 12 SVs remaining. Look at these two Hellions in a very juicy position. Stim is about to finish up. Getting a couple of really good shots off. Hart might be able to stabilize after all, but we have to ask ourselves the cast question because that's what we do. And that question is, at what cost? Well, at the cost of losing 41 SVs at least, perhaps a few more. Orbital commands are good, Nate, but are they that good? Seven SCVs and three mules. Anything's possible, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ter Terrence ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hart is still going to try to hang in. The command center is burning, by the way. He needs to be able to save it in the near future. Zigwa is still producing nothing but links. This Banshee must have so many kills, by the way. See, he did some work. See, put in OT. Stay 40. 40 kills Whoa, in the Banshee. Oh, it's a commander. Can we play the David Guetta song? <laughs> Just kidding. Don't play the David Guetta song. It's bad. I don't want to listen to the David Guetta song at all, Nate. I don't know why I said that. It's okay. This next attack will probably... The Banshee put in work, but I don't know if she... I don't know if she can lift this much. Well, eventually <laughs> she will. This is gonna be... Alright, got a bailing, got a few more, got a few more. Oh, look at these helis oh, from the high ground. Stim is actually, done! Actually Everything's hard. gonna clump up so hard! Oh. He's focused all the bailings down, the Hellions can fight these Zerglings hard! There are like ten more coming in. He refuses to die. One bailing detonation will kill all oh these Marines. God. He needs to keep focusing oh them down. God. The oh. Banshee's doing work, but... Once these links get around the army, once does there's no more choke point. I really, I don't think they, I don't think that Hart can hold this off. I think he can. It's what? Hart. Hart is so what? sick. <laughs> he is still alive. Fifty-two Currently. kills on the Banshee. No, Lift the, the command center. Lift the orbital. You need the orbital. Don't be a hero. So Hart has just somehow stabilized what? with like almost no the units. Oh. from the left side will roll in. The oh, widow mine gets denied. a sick shot off. <laughs> what? Well, if Hart, if Hart needs a miracle, he's he's got part of it so far. But without the Widow Mines, he, no. he needs more juicy Widow Mine shots, as you would say, if he wants to be able to win this game. He's really trying to bait those shots out, and he has. Uh, good job there, getting one of those Widow Mines to trigger. 19 more Banelings on the production for Jigawa. Jigawa will go up to like 65 Banelings, so the Baneling train will keep rolling in. Can Hardy Splits be good enough? Is this possible, Nate? Off creep, he's making it work so far. The Widow Mine gets most of the Banelings. No Hardy only has a few more Banelings oh to kill. God, he hard. still has 40, 40 Marines. What? And 3-3 is about to finish up now for Hart as well. He's still down 22 workers, but he's going to be a 3-3 uh, Terran against a 2-2 Zerg. Uh, these Mutalists are going to do some work in the third base from Hart, so a few more SUVs will fall, and the missile turret went down. But Hart is playing an abs absolutely phenomenal game this so far. This is the most ridiculous TVZ that I've seen in a long time. The Mutalists are on the other side of the map working on the orbital command. Bailing's getting reasonable connections this time. Yeah, this is what he needs, but the Mutalisks killed yeah. that, that fourth command center, which is quite nice. He's going to go after Adon's heart. He's just saying, hey, if your yeah. mutants are going to be over there, I'm going to keep fighting you. And wow. even though you're making Banelings, oh my God. I've got I've got robotic hands. I and can split for days. <laughs> yes, he can. He's going to pick up these Banelings as well that are morphing in the natural. None of them will almost finish up. The other Banelings will probably not finish up either. Uh, Shigawa is falling apart. There come the Banelings. He cancels it. The Baneling nest will fall. Are you kidding me? Heart is about to perhaps win one of the most ridiculous TVZs that I've ever seen. I cannot believe what I've just witnessed, Nate. I believe in the mule. I believe in the mule, Roddy. He has just about oh done it. God. These muters are doing a great job of delaying the production, though. If Hart's army does, if he can just clean up Hart's army once, he has so many mutas parked on the production. He cannot. He re he pretty much can't rebuild this force because he's, he's just been slowed down. So, but much. how is he going to? How is he going to clean up that army? He lost his bane. Okay, he still has a few banings in the main base, by the way. He got Hart needs more. to pay attention. I'm not sure if he pays attention to these banings. I'm not sure if he's seen them. Maybe he has seen them now. The tour is making his way home, by the way. So it's just marauders and a few zerglings. Banings connecting with marauders is not what Jigwa needs. Hart will. Oh, Ooh. good shots. Good Banelink detonations for Shigwa. These mutas are still ransacking the main base, picking off Marines, picking off everything. And now Shigwa, he's starting to get a, yeah. a nice, comfortable position. Keep in mind, he has a lot of gas. If he can stabilize, he can pump out 
I guess a lot of... No, uh, he lost the, the Spire the tour and the made it home, though. He, he brought the tour home. And the Mutilisk is going to try to kill the tour, but there are so many Marines assisting fire as well that quite a few of these Mutilisk went down. Only three remaining. And three Mutilisk is not all that scary so anymore. So from this point on, Zhigwa can produce nothing but Zerglings. Now 20 Banings are on the way, but Hart is knocking on his door again. He's probably going to have to abandon these Banings, Nate. Yeah, or he's uh, he's moving the Marines up yeah, with that 3 3 upgrades. It's just too much. The Banelings will finish, but with few Zerglings mm. to support them and no more Mutas here, he can just pick up. Yeah, he, he probably pick up. He's going to try to split again. Hard. You're really playing with fire. These Banelings morph like on top of your army. So this time the Banelings will get reasonable connections, but the reinforcements are arriving again. Widowmind soaking up a few shots. Still uh, pretty six splits down the north side. Uh, I, I think this is it, Nate. I for think the first time, Hart has done it. For the first time in 20 minutes, we have a we have a we have an arm. We have a supply lead for Hart. He's ahead in supply. We have 30 <laughs> supplies. He's gonna kill these drones. These drones are dead. Wow. Shigua, I can't. I have, this game no. has just been madness. Bah. Hart is a god at this point. Hart is an actual god amongst men. He made it to the Premier League once in his career, but now he is playing better StarCraft than he has done in a long time. A few more Banix are going to try to save this game for Zhigawa. Uh, what was it, like 60, 64 against 15 or something like that? Yeah, he had seven SCVs oh at some point in this God. game. GG Hart! One of the most overpowered abilities that has ever existed in StarCraft 2 was Vortex, casted by a mothership. With the combination of Archons and Scythe Storms, you could create such a gigantic amount of AoE damage that it was possible to destroy even the toughest units in the game. The most iconic comeback with that ability happened in the GSL finals between MVP and Squirtle. The latter was in a desperate situation, and only a perfect Archon toilet could save the game against an absolutely massive Sky Turn army. I mean, he has. Does he have enough Archons to actually do that? You have to deal so much damage with Archons. That, I mean, the VCs have so much help. And he's just pushing, man. He's like, all right, let's do it. Oh my god. And what oh my god. god. Where's his Archons? He needs to get those in there! He gunned down the Archons before it was uh, time. And the Void Rays come out! And Archon goes in! Go, Archon go, 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 go. goes in! Get in there! Oh my god, what are we seeing? The oh other side stars! This is madness! Oh my god, he's gonna kill the Archons! Oh, the PCs are all going down! I can't believe oh what I just god. saw! Here we have another game featuring MVP, also known as King of Wings for his brilliant dominance in Wings of Liberty. While this comeback might not be the most epic one, just imagine how incredibly difficult it is to come back against the next best Terran in the world, especially when you have a serious worker yeah, deficit. This actually is going to do a lot yeah. of damage because there's no medevac out here to heal these marines. Uh, oh, he's going to elevator this... Uh, Elevator these Hellions up here. He's gonna go very, very fast with this. Oh man, there's way too many units in there right now, but he does have Andy. the Widowmine drop coming up. Oh, all the SCVs come out. This is brutal. Close oh your eyes. Oh my god, this is Ouch. so bad. More Hellions coming up here, and uh, MVP almost seemed to be too preoccupied. Uh oh, this well, could be... Uh, oh my god! Uh, not quite enough there, and he is gonna go ahead, scan, and kill this off, so... It looks like Innovation has taken a pretty gigantic yeah. lead from here. It's 9 SCVs to 30. That's not something you can come back from. Uh, so MVP will be following up with a Hellbat drop. And unless he can kill the uh, a similar amount of SCVs as what Innovation just did, he may as well GG. Right. Like right now, all that matters is this drop doing a good amount of damage. Looks like, unfortunately, that's not going to be won't. the case. Okay, well that means MVP is even more in trouble because yeah. that didn't actually kill anything. Let's see if these Hellions do some damage though. Oh, Rushing man. in here now. Uh, it looks like the SCDs are being evacuated, but again, this is not enough. Innovation is sewn up tight here, Tasteless. No water is getting in, or in this case, fire from those helmets. They're just getting more and more and more behind. It's not that he, uh, MVP shouldn't be doing this. He has to try to get ahead somehow, but when it doesn't work, uh, he's in even more trouble. Yeah. Stimming coming in here now. And it well, looks like that was a smart move to back up. There yeah. was too much in front of the siege tanks to actually snipe them. Yeah, that could have gone well for MVP if he had kept going there. So he's got to be careful about that. Oh, it doesn't want to lose his Vikings. And actually only loses one. Okay, yeah, considering so MVP went down to nine SCVs, this game is looking much better for him than I ever could have imagined. I know, uh, I right? would not have criticized him at all if he had just GG'd after going down to nine SCVs. Oh, I know, right? He's, he's showing his resilience here, but still, this is 
a losing battle so far that he's fighting. No counter damage. Uh, but if he can secure this fourth right now, he does get into a much Four better position. Centers, and he's adding star ports with tech labs as well. So he's already oh, getting ready. This is what I'm talking team. about. Oh, yeah, Stimming and running in here. But this is a lot of Hellbats to take the damage. Isn't enough. Uh, and it does look like it was. That army's going to turn around. Now, what's... What's funny about that back there was I was, as I was saying, you want to stim and run in when the siege tanks are not in siege mode. Mm -hmm. So that was a big mistake there, you know, uh, by <laughs> innovation. And now MVP in a supply yeah, lead, bigger drop. MVP MVP's moving out. out. Oh, this is huge! Look at how many siege tanks we actually have out Stimmy right now. Up. And he wants to drop his Hellbats all over these Siege Tanks, and in fact he does! He'll erase them in a matter of seconds, and Innovation might be in trouble. He's being caught during his Sky Terran switch. MVP starting out with nine SCVs after that huge harassment uh, by Innovation has now come back, is in a massive lead, a maxed out Terran rolling towards his opponent with his mech army. Right now Innovation is going to be in a lot of trouble. He certainly is, but we are going to have the battle cruisers popping out. So MVP has to be very careful to have enough anti-air, and he just lost all his fight. He's a little bit sloppy there, just has one left over, and he's not building that much anti-air right now. So if we do see battle cruisers pop out, how does this army stop it? Yeah, it's a good question. He's going to try to throw down some turrets, but is that going to be enough in time? Well, if he can actually get the turrets up, it may end up being, but the Battlecruisers are coming out. These Battlecruisers really need to go after the turrets right now. If these turrets get up, then actually Innovation's going to be in all the trouble. But if they can kill these Siege Shanks after killing off the turrets, that would be great. He's got, trying to get the SCDs here, making the turrets, instead of just trying to get them while they're building. Uh, the, some turrets are getting up now, though. The uh, uh, Battlecruisers are very strong against these turrets. But the SCDs repair it oh just in God. time. MVP, what are we watching here? Great play right now and he is starting to make a lot more anti-air. I am getting some sick nerd chills, Tasteless, because this is an amazing comeback that we're watching. All right, now, also, you got to know, he did do some damage, but he didn't take out any expansions. Yes. So Innovation is still mining money. He's still economically sound right now. The base down here at the bottom, he's got to do some more damage over there. Meanwhile, Innovation expanded the top, a drop over here as well. Really nice drop, killing off a lot of siege tanks there. A little bit of an overextension by MVP beyond his turret ring. Uh, but, you know, Innovation, as you said, Tasis, he is still holding on. If MVP, though, can get enough anti air down there to really push those battle cruisers back and support his siege tanks, he may be able to get rid of one of these bases. All right. Uh, medivacs are now moving out right now for a counter attack over here from, from Innovation. This is what you want to do when you're being contained. This is exactly what you want to do. Uh, now, if he takes out one of those bases... Oh, by the way, this expansion just now spotted. Yeah. He's landing all his mules there before he might have to lose it. <laughs> That's He's right. get all the minerals he can. He needs to suck up the minerals there as opposed to his other locations, which could get mined out. Uh-oh, oh, a lot man. of Shanks falling. MVP has done such a great job coming back to this game, Tasis, but he's lost a lot of very important units. He's well, down to five Siege Shanks only. And here's what's uh, also interesting. Innovation now maxed out. MVP not so much. Well, uh, I really like that he's mixed in so much Green Marauder because he killed off, excuse me, a huge amount of Siege Shanks. And the Siege Shanks are what really decimate the Marine Marauder composition. So. He's switching back into that, and that's going to do so well against all these Thors that he had to make for anti-air. All right, stimming and hitting hard now. He is going to potentially wipe out this mech army here. There are so many Marauders, uh, which are so strong against these siege tanks. It looks like the Thors were, were just barely enough uh, yeah, to do some more like damage here. He but Battlecruiser's coming in here. But yeah, those battle cruisers are going to be very scary indeed. And he has got to hightail it out of there right now, Tasis. He needs more Vikings produced immediately. Yeah, um, this is getting really interesting. He needs to get those SCDs over to those Thors right away. The Thors have a lot of surface areas. You get a lot of SCDs to repair them. Uh, and, and we're going to see just that. Whoa, he does take down one of the battle cruisers. Very well done. And the other one does start to get out of there. The game may actually somehow end up stabilizing Tasteless. This game is pretty wild. Yeah, um, this is a crazy one. Now, one thing to note is that Innovation, he did sneak that uh, expansion at the upper right. 
um, and does have much better production than MVP. Uh, MVP, uh, he's going to float uh, this, this Mac Army that uh, we could have an engagement with over here. He's moving in. And here we go. That is a lot of siege shanks. He's throwing down quite a few Seeker missiles as well. And they do end up connecting. MVP pushing through. Can he kill this army? Does he have enough anti-air? It looks like the supplies are still evened out. The humiliated Innovation Army now retreating as MVP continues to push forward. If he can get inside the main and occupy the location where the production facilities are, this could be a win here for MVP. Faceless, I don't even know what to say. MVP pushing back Innovation. He may be able to do it here. Still a lot of production for Innovation though. And in the meantime, really hurting MVP's economy. MVP is barely mining. I want to point something out. Innovation had the entire right side of the map. Uh, and MVP had barely a semblance of an economy right now. Uh, and has managed to what looks like uh, be uh, moments away from actually wiping out the heart of Innovation's base. You know, there's still chances for Innovation though. He's producing a lot of units. And oh, oh no! I love it. Beautiful move, getting rid of that siege shank, which gave him such a better position up here. And in fact, he's on top of the production facilities. Now, Innovation's making starports elsewhere. Now, take a look at the uh, the minerals here at the uh, upper right side of our screen. Look at how slow it's going for MVP. He has, like, almost no economy. Whereas, uh, as you can see, Innovation's is fluctuating rapidly, showing that he's got a really healthy economy. So, MVP has to do the rest of this perfectly. Innovation still has some wiggle room. He's stimming now, he's going in. How much damage can he do? Well, MVP has those Hellbats up just in time to help push him back. And in fact, his Vikings taking out every single medevac. That's it, GG! Imagine a game where you forget the most crucial upgrade, Warp Gates for Protoss Race, and your whole plan crumbles instantly. <laughs> the good old 5 gate plus 1 air weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he is. He, he's, popped, he's his, so, he just popped a guardian shield too. Oh, he's gonna be so sad. What's happening, Alicia? What's going on? If this was me, I, I think I honestly I would just leave the he game. He is when going I to be. This. He's going to be more. He I just. Know. I think he just clicked on. Did he click he, he's on? so mad. Oh. Oh no. TT. Oh, no. Now you are also 80 supply behind, and you got to go for an improvised Olin that's not even supposed to work at that stage of the game. Do you think it's possible to win? Well. In some extremely rare cases of ZVP, it's certainly achievable. And there is not like there's a crazy remax behind this because Tutming lost a lot of workers in the last fight. Tutming is gonna go for it. See, perhaps this is opportunity. First Alicia. force fields for Alicia going down. He's got the uh, time warp as well. Guardian shield now pops, helping to soak up hits. He's actually killing off these mutalisks. Should go At least for the a reasonable prism. number of them. And the warp prism is still alive, as you mentioned, allowing him to get more reinforcements. Yeah, I really think he should have gone for the prism. He's not killing the warp prism. Alicia is going to win this fight. The Mothership Core is still alive as well, made a grand total of 15 kills throughout this game. And like I said before, Nate, Tootwing doesn't have a crazy bank. He took quite some economic damage from that first push. I actually think that Alicia is going to win this after all. There's the next warp in of Zealots to deal with those Zerglings. Five more Stalkers being brought in to kill off the Mutalisks. And that Mothership Core with 16 kills may be able to finish this game here. You're Has the real MVP. Alicia done it. Plus one Mothership Core. I believe, Roddy. Oh. I believe. Well, it is going to happen. GG is called and Alicia is going to qualify. One of the most amusing game happened between Maru and Has. And to be honest, it's more of a miraculous comeback that should have never happened. Because the other side, with a massive advantage, performed possibly the biggest throw in StarCraft 2 history. This game was a mess from the beginning. Has the master of creativity puzzled Maru so much that the latter voluntarily closed himself onto a basis, allowing Has to do whatever he wants. And sadly, the Protoss player chose the wrong move to finish this game. He's gotta be so confused. He doesn't dare to move out either. Has, look, okay, how many stalkers is that? 37. That is 37 stalkers. He's gonna go. Is he just gonna. Does he even have high ground vision? He doesn't have high ground vision, Todd. There is a bunch of Widowman. Oh! What has? is this? He's blinking on top of it! Oh, what? this is bad. He's, what Maru is very close by. He's gonna come in back with all the bio. Todd. Everything is gonna die. Todd. What just happened? I think Maru just won the game. <laughs> the triple robo being there, by the way, that can be, be very easily sieged. 
He's, got, he's already in position for it. Time Warp's going to go down. He's going to try and take some of this army as quickly as possible with him. Uh, everything's stimmed up, though. He's going to lose his Robos! Oh no, he needs those Colossi! Anything! As the Bio gets on top of this, the stream is coming down as well. 142 armor supply against 100 here. The Bio is just spreading itself out. There's Widow Mines as well as Liberators to cover some of it. And Maru's going to keep on reinforcing here from across the map. That siege is not about to end. It feels like has eventually will inevitably have to engage into this. Oh my, and the he last needs to Robo. shade Adepsin and then engage and try and clean up, but he's I mean... He's making three Robos at his gold base! He's got so much money, but he can't do anything with it! This bio is just ripping him apart! 2-2 two, two is not going to finish! And this is match point as well here for the qualification! Oh my god! It's a sick time to play this kind of game! He's going to come around here as well, and can't take that fight! Oh, he's going to catch a Liberator here that was trying to reinforce... It's so funny too, guys. Look at this on the left-hand side. Maru's like, what the heck? Why? <laughs> There's buildings everywhere on <laughs> the map. The oh. You know what's the upside of this? He can't get on top of his production and shut it down completely because it's all over the place. <laughs> it's just, I'm pretty sure there's been at least six gateways littering the map. At least. The Colossi are alone. Oh, they've got force fields with them. That was meant to be like this, I guess. He was trying to laser a couple units before Liberators can set up. He's actually going to shade forward. The Shading Stalkers in. are super far away from this army. This army's dead! Why Look. are the Stalkers not there now? Ah. Oh my god. And the Adepts shaded in alone. It's so cost efficient against this. Hass is making nothing. Maru's making everything on three base alone. I can't believe it. Oh, there's no Robo Bay now. He has triple Robo, but no Robo Bay. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, wow, actually. Uh, Maru for extending a bit, uh, gonna launch a PDD. That yeah. was nicely done. The PDD was good for it. Uh, making immortals. To making be honest, Maru doesn't have that much minerals left, but the fact that he's maxed out and already has a bit of a bank, he's gonna start five ghosts. Three immortals at a time are being made now from Haz, whose economy has taken a huge hit here from losing all of his bases. He's trying to snipe a couple liberators here before potentially engaging. He's gonna get conned if he's not careful. He doesn't have a mothership core. He can't re or recall or anything like that. Here comes the stim. If he goes too far away from the Colossus, they will die. And that's gonna be Liberation Zone set up on this as well here. Maru is steamrolling through this army. And it looks like Hass is gonna get killed off right here, right now, as Maru just continues to barrel down on this. He takes him to his most important production, GG. Maru takes the game, he takes the series. While this game was very back and forth, and it's really difficult to call it a comeback, the iconic ending of that match is certainly something you'd like to see, even if you saw it a million times already. The most amazing Bangling hit could just be single-handedly it for it. The game. The last Another scan. Orbital gonna go. The last scans down. There are no scans left. Scarlet is gonna be on Burrow and Run. She has killed off the last Orbital Command. Scarlet refuses to engage without the Mutalist. The Queen's taking damage. A Queen falls, but Scarlet on the regroup is. Oh my God! Oh my God! And the first place goes to MVP and Tafel, arguably the biggest comeback that ever happened in the history of StarCraft 2. Polish Zerg player was a big underdog in this match, but he still managed to surprise MVP with a big Roach attack that absolutely decimated the Terran's economy. He was left with only a handful of SCVs, and yet he kept on fighting till the very end. And it was such an unexpected result that this game even became a meme about foreigners and the skill gap with Koreans. But there's nothing but units being made. 30 roaches, actually, Whoa. he's got 30 roaches. He's putting nothing but roaches here. The bunker goes down, MVP did not repair it. MVP's uh -oh. front wall is breaking down. Yeah, and he really doesn't have that many units left at home here at all. He has two Hellbats in the middle of the map here, trying to do some damage to his opponent's SCVs drones. He's, he's in desperation mode here. The army value 62 to 32 right now in favor of Tefel. MVP is dropping once again in his opponent's main base, trying to kill off some drones. But at the same time, this power at the front is doing too much. He's actually killed off 18 workers to his opponent's killed off 18 workers. MVP, is, dead even? is he going to be in trouble here? 64 he army supply to 28. Tefl could take game number one, he's doubled his supply here, Kolaris. And he's slowly getting on top of his pr uh, production here. There's three Marauders, three Marines left over to try and clean all this up. The Hellbats in the main have actually died off, so they're not going to do anything else. And now Tefl sat on all of this production, could continue to do a lot of damage. He's killed off so many, he's killed off 30 workers. It's 23 workers to 43 right now. Yeah, trademark Tefl here, just smashing through. He's bringing down the command center. If that does not get picked up, that shall fall as well. Slow Zerglings come into the mix. 
Because why you're not? A, you're a cheeky Polish man, you are. <laughs> a cheeky Polish man. He realizes that there's a lot of Marauders. Why not bring some Zerglings along for the fun? As he should be able to kill off quite a lot of this leftover. Only four Marauders left. These Medivacs completely drained of energy. He's having to pull all the SCVs once again to go for the engagement. 41 workers have been killed off by Tefel. And in game number one, Tefel says, once again, this is Europe MVP. Some of us are pretty sturdy. Some of us don't like to lose games too often. And he... Six workers left. <laughs> Tefl is going to win this game. It's that simple now. He's done enough damage. Even if he didn't outright kill his opponent, he goes back to joining and whatnot. MVP is putting everything back into surviving with this game. He's got three command centers. You know, there's always that off chance. Does he have enough economy to kind of bounce back through having three command centers? In this game, I'd probably say no. Behind yeah. this, Tefl, if he wants to make sure, guarantee this coming down, you know, the Hydralis Den. The Infestation Pit, anything to stop Medivacs, because that's the kind of big threat. This kind of army can't be beaten up. Well, for, for, for MVP, if he goes across, he's going to get squished. If he fights heads up, if he uses Medivacs to micro drop in multiple places, maybe, but still. Yeah. A double supply, five or so SCVs, eight SCVs. This is an almost impossible comeback position for MVP. Ideally, what he'd like to, to really ramp up his power force that Tefl has two mines. This is, this is interesting of an attack here. I, I, I don't think I agree with that. I don't think he can break him right now. Yeah, I don't think that was the right <laughs> move. Definitely sit out and have the better concave is better. Oh, he's going for it. Whoa. This is a little risky. Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, he does have plus two, one on these roaches, so they are doing a lot of damage, and eventually they probably will kill this yeah, army off. And sort of any risky. trade Tefel could make now is great. Yeah, that's true. That is true. A little bit risky. We saw everyone had their, their heart in their throat then as he moved through the mines and whatnot <laughs> but he does push mvp back to one base another victory there and as you said plus two attack is done and plus two armor as well on the way a nice counter drop by mvp doing everything remember mvp is a winner mvp knows what it what it takes to be a winner yeah. and come back from five scvs guys five blinking scvs that's how Many he went down to. That's uh, that's not too many SUVs. There's not a lot of money. <laughs> the look on your face just then. <laughs> Clarence, if I was on camera, man. <laughs> oh, that was great. Seven Hydras coming in. MVP's trading so well. Still, 180 supply There's to 80. There's no way. MVP went down to five SUVs. Uh, well, the third base is under assault again. I mean, the he's losing like, units at a rapid rate. He is, but I, I mean, his economy is pretty good as well. He doesn't have his fifth and sixth gas guys though behind this. And actually, Tefel's almost mined out in his main. Roaches are falling down. MVP, two tanks on the high ground. The Roaches try to run away, and that, that was <laughs> inevitable. They were going to get chased out. The supply difference, 60 supply. Third command center goes down. Oh! Hydralists are coming in now. He has no high ground vision. Why would you not bring an overseer to kill these mm. tanks? How many kills do they 23 have? 23 Hydras, though. That's a lot of Hydras. They have two two upgrades. Yeah, pushing careful, on once again. Careful. So much damage being done from those Hydras in the back there. These Siege Tanks must have so many kills between them. Um, but anyway, the Bio's still holding on strong as well. The supplies are getting pretty close. The army supply right now is There's 81 to 73. He could hold this force off. There's the tanks going down. Dude, 90 supply tank. to 80. Oh, is this? He's dropped in the back. He's dropped on the Hydralisk's den. He's going to kill it. MVP, just took, a, MVP just took a supply lead, guys. What is going on? This can't be happening. MVP's if, got an army supply lead, guys. I don't think he's, if he gets the seven infestors out right now and then stops this push, then great. But, I, well, he's going to go for a counter. A counter attack is a decent option. Uh, he can lose a third. If he kills MVP's third as well, they trade thirds. Infestors could be the savior. Yeah. But still, MVP, that, that means that MVP would have to walk into a bunch of fungals too. Like, that's okay. He's trading a bit of energy there Ooh. for a fungal. He's losing one or two of the infestors up to the north as well there, though. And another fungal does land, but he has only energy for one more fungal, and he loses all of the infestors in the process. He's got a couple more being built. MVP with a supply lead still. Tefl is still on the other side of the map. He's entering MVP's main base. What the hell is going on? He... I, well... Somebody called Doctor Who, man. <laughs> We need to go back in time. <laughs> I don't... Oh my gosh. So... Oh, good fungus from the high ground yeah. there. That's really brought the health of these units down. And he doesn't have that many medivacs. So he doesn't have that many medivacs, but the problem still remains. In a heads-up fight... He's losing his... He's being held at this choke point in his main. He's losing his army inside so his base. Much. He's How losing his army. He has 26 army supply against 61. Apollo. 
I'm just shaking my head. Yeah. I'm just shaking my head at this point. I, I can't believe what we've just seen. This this would have to be one of the biggest comebacks. I remember in WCS last season, it was uh, Happy versus Vortex was one of the biggest comebacks on Daybreak. Um, if I'm not, I'm pretty sure it was uh, WCS. That was a major, major comeback. Yeah. But this it has to be one of the biggest. I can't. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Five SCVs to 50 drones. And then all the way back. And now his army supply, 20 to 59 in favor of the Terran. 33 supply to 69. Spinecrawl is in desperation coming down from Tefl. I, I can't believe this. No. MVP, and I know I've been saying it for the last 10 minutes, I can't believe it, but you have to grasp how big of a comeback from zero to hero this actually was. He was dead, let's be fair. He was dead. And now he's he cleaning is resurrected. Up the last few units. I don't know what what's going through Tefl's mind right now. He's like, this isn't a European Terran player. No, this is not. This isn't a North American Terran player. I'm playing against MV. I'm playing against a four-time GSL champion. That just doesn't die. That doesn't die. That won't ever. give up, won't surrender. He does not die. Two swarm hosts try and hold on to everything, but the <laughs> scan goes down. Bye-bye, swarm hosts. And Tefel now is holding on. <laughs> to 13 drones. I'm losing my I, sanity it's... here. I need one of those t-shirts that says one by one, the penguin stole my sanity because that's what I feel like. Yeah. Or it's more like one yep. by one. I, I, I'm, I can't even think. What a game. Guys, we're about is... to see the, the victory march of MVP. <laughs> drones come oh. off the line and he will take map number G one. G, 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 G. Tefl. But MVP, MVP, MVP. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and write your favorite comeback that happened in StarCraft 2. Check out our other video about the best moments in StarCraft 2 history. And as usual, have a nice day and see you next time.